Hi, it's Michelle Turner, and I was given two videos of a child, and a mom's looking for me to help assist with her movements. I do this a lot. People send me videos or tag me with YouTube, so that's fine. So, but she was nice enough to give me these videos. So she's looking for her help with her daughter, and you'll be able to see her. Sorry, I wish I knew how to do side-by-side -side screens and all of that, but I'm learning. So one of the things I wanted to look at is the way she's sitting up. We're going into standing. Now, when I say this, I'm observing. I never criticize. I never, I'm always looking for the potential of any movement patterns, period, the end. I don't ever say, oh my God, what'd you do to this back? You know, this is where we're at, where we're going to go from here, period, the end. It's not about the diagnosis. It's not, it's about how that person's moving. So what I want you to do first, though, is to understand how someone else is moving. So I like that old saying, you have to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. Very similar. So I can easily criticize if I wanted to. So can anybody. I mean, you all can say, what's wrong with me? That's what's easiest. What's looking for is, that's great, but where can we go from there? But to understand movement, you have to understand movement in yourself, to understand movement in others. In a sense, putting on their shoes. So first of all, I just want you to think about standing up. So from standing from here, if I'm looking at you, I'm standing. Now you might want to slow it down, but just look at how you would stand. And one of the things that happens is, if you notice, it's sort of like a rock, but I'm coming over my system. My breath is coming over, I'm coming over my pelvis, I'm coming over my feet, and I'm coming over, rolling up and going into sitting. Standing, sorry. So now in this situation, watch her. Up. Yay. And sit back down. Down, down, down. Sit back down. Can you sit? Yeah. Up. And sit down. Oh. Again? Again, yes. Yeah. Up. So now, what did you notice between the way I got up and the way she got up? And I'm not saying look at it as a diagnosis, just the quality. So, but one of the things it really has to take into consideration are the AFOs. A lot of argument there. You can't take someone that has limited mobility and limit their mobility even more. Now, if you have to save the ankles, whatever you're doing, if that's what it is, if it's for structure, find a way of doing it, but then allowing this time to happen. But if, it, if you're doing AFOs to help her stand, that's not working. Let me have my time. Okay, there's 26 bones in each feet. So a quarter of your bones, 52 bones, are just in your feet alone. So when I go to get up, that, that rolling over, not just over my pelvis, but my, my feet are, are spreading out, rolling, are taking all this information. I have a heel going through the arch, through the five toes. And if you don't think they're all essential, how we were made, you cut off your big toe and see how you stand. It's amazing what the foot is made to do. So if you're putting that foot into something, so now I want you to do this. So now sit here. I want you to solidify or bring your, your feet in a 90 degree angle, but tight. And now I also want you to hold your breath. And now get up. Have you tried? First of all, you can't do it without your hands. You cannot sit there and, and tighten your abs and tighten your, your ankles and get up. Do you see the work that's involved just with that? Changing just those dynamics just in standing. So, if you decide you're going to continue that conversation with the AFOs for whatever reason, notice another thing. I'm going to have you watch your stand up again. Yay! And sit back down. Down, down, down. Sit back down. Can you sit? Yeah. Up. And sit down. You're noticing, especially when she's doing that with the, the right chest cavity. So the right chest cavity wants to do this versus that rolling. Just think of that rolling, putting my shoes on, 
rolling to sit up, all of those conversations that are needing to happen. So it's it's like when I have a foot problem or a brace in, I've got to go at um, the other areas and have them more available. A uh, perfect example, if, I, if someone's rod it has graphite in the back, I have to get the chest even more supple than it would be to make up the difference where that back can't change, where the back is more ripped. That, that energy, that movement has to go somewhere. And if it can't, then you're, you're like this, trying to get up. So that's what you want to work on because when I get up, the ultimate way of getting up is that rotation through the foot and bringing my, my system up like that or coming up. I should be able to get up through the left or through the right just as easy. I'm more neutral. I have a, a patterning that I'm, I'm ambidextrous in a sense, so I can do that. So the next thing is climbing the couch. So first of all, let's watch her first. She can go first. do it. Okay, now I'm going to do it. When I go to climb, and I'm going to go down on my knees just to show you. So just the climbing and back down. So now what you might have missed are some crucial points. So now I'm moving the camera down and I want you to pay close attention to my feet. One of the things people don't realize, most people think of a midline in the chest cavity. I see an exterior midline through the back. So my heel at any given moment should be able to cross midline. Okay, and this is the one thing that's really crucial and kids have a problem with, especially at this special needs. What they want to do is this. Here, I'll do it this way. People, people with kids with special needs, windshield wipers, kind of like this. And you're really going to see that too if you have AFOs. But a heel should be able to go in and out to cross midline because that's side sitting. That's my neutral. I can go in any direction. But if I'm like this, or especially like this, then the side sitting's not there. You'll get more of a W sit, or, or they won't be able to transition. They'll have to fall down first to get their foot back um, to allow that movement pattern. So if I'm down like this, now watch my foot. For me to climb, let's look at my heel rotate. See how it's crossing the middle line? This rotates the knees. I'm bringing my pelvis over. It's a tight range. Okay? And then that pre-crawl goes in. I go into an extension, and I pull myself up. And notice, too, this foot's rotating. And that's climbing up. With the AFOs, my feet are now here. So for me to do that, now I'm already thinking about which leg to even get up because of my balance. Because if I go like this, I'm going to stumble because now my pelvis can't come over as much. So if you notice, now the knee is more out here. Okay? Because that's, her pelvis can't see. When I'm here, my pelvis, but see, my feet can turn, and so can my pelvis. But when I, my feet can't turn, now my knee is more out here. So now the climb is much more laborious. Even I'm having a hard time doing it because I'm trying to keep my feet from turning or rotating. So, if you're going to be working on those things, then you need to do them, if you can, with the AFOs off. See again, because when I'm on all fours, watch my heels. My heels will rotate, so will my tush. And I'm doing this nice and slow, but I come down and around. When I'm with AFOs, I don't have that rotation, so I literally, if I want to go back there, I have to fall down and throw my feet around to do it. It takes a lot of muscles. I have to hold my breath. 
And when you're working it that hard, so like chopping wood, you can't learn your ABCs because you're so busy in the physical. Again, feet like this, look what it takes for me to get over. And it's a little bit easier because my feet are dangling, but look what it takes for me to get over and back on the all fours. Versus again with my feet here, watch the rotation of the feet. The whole rest of the body rotates too, but you'd be surprised how the system's totally connected. Now the way of looking at it, let's say if you had a set of scissors and I had a lawnmower, we could both can cut the grass. It's going to be different. It's a different system. One might be longer, one might be more perfection. Uh, you know, there's, there, there's pros and cons. It's two different ways of doing it. But again, look at the efficiency of the movement when you're doing it. And I think that that would really help a lot. That the tonus of the muscles, too, will drop down in a more normal range, per se, if we can say it. Versus always having to be at that high frequency that's needed to get this knee up. Again, just to lift the leg like this. See, I have nowhere to go. I'm getting knocked over. Foot turning, and then I can just bring my foot up. But you, to do this with AFOs, you'll, you'll see the kids always like this and trying to move to do something. So, can't always say it's just because of the disability. It it's, could be that conversation, and it needs to be looked at. So I really appreciate you doing the videos. Um, and hopefully you'll see the two and what you need to work on to help your daughter get more agile. So thanks.